is insane. What is going on, real people? Welcome back to the channel, guys. I have another great story to tell y'all. Now, this one involves a beaver, but before we jump into the story, I have to ask y'all this question. Have y'all ever had beaver meat? Because if you haven't, I really, really recommend it because it is amazing, guys. Like, I would compare it to, like, beef fajita meat. It is so tender and juicy, especially if you marinate it. It's falls off the bone. It is really, really good. Um, this pond does not need four beavers. So my buddy came to me and was like, Eric, we need to take care of this beaver population, bro. They're tearing down my trees. They're flooding my creek. It's just a mess over here. And I was like, guy, I don't know nothing about trapping beavers, but I'll tell you what, I'll find out for you. So I did a little research, watched a few videos. <coughs> Trapper Jay, if you're watching, shout out to you, my friend. You did a lot. Um, so I went on eBay. I bought my first Conor Bear 330 because that is like the beaver trap. So I got that and it was like $30, $32 off eBay. I forgot who I bought it from. But I got that, came out here, set that bad boy up, and let me tell you, uh, we moved that thing like three, four times trying to find a good spot. Uh, we started down all the way at this end and at this end is the beaver dam. I mean, like the hut. It's not really a dam, it's more of just a hut where they're stacking sticks on top of sticks, on top of mud, on top of more sticks. So it's like that. Okay, now slowly, <laughs> don't let it go. Slowly set it down here so I can put this stick to the spring. Austin. I'm holding it, I'm, it, was, it was loose. Put it down. It was loose? Put it down. All right, here we Do go. Do not let it go, but slowly <laughs> put it down. Here we go. Water's so cold. Oh. Fucking sticks. Oh, hold yeah. up. Take it with me. It's good. It's good. It's good. Alright, you got it? I'm starting to sink a little bit though. Put it right. There you go. Where's the hole? There you need this other stick. Mm. Left side. That's freaking loose. Where's the chain at? You still got hold of it? Or you got none? Can you hold down there? Very cold. Now how are you going to get out? <laughs> Come this way or dark. Brown. I'm trying my foot stuff. There's another hole right there. That's crazy how hollow the ground is. I stuck I stuck these this stick down in there. It's like that's how deep it was. Oh definitely. She is set right in front of that hole too. Yeah. All right, so we're back out here at the beaver trap, and it does not look like it has been set off at all. I know y'all can't see it, I don't even know why I'm trying, but you know, it's right there, that little faint, faint line right there. Yeah, you can see it, not set off. But it's right here in front of this hole, and look, the ground is completely hollow, and I'm pretty sure it leads all the way over here to this beaver dam. So we're gonna leave, that is the uh, Care Bear 330. So we're gonna leave that right there, probably for another day or two, cause it is in front of the hole. So if they come back home, it should get them. So we're probably gonna, look at the bubbles over there again. That's them. That's the beaver right in front of us. I know. They're swimming off. Swimming off. jumped on it. Uh, so they're here. Yeah, how did they get through? I, the back side and stuff? There must be another hole probably over there that we haven't checked out yet, it but it's just here. so deep. I bet it's all the way across probably is I know for sure they're crossing right there where that water meets the other side because they're going over here that's Rocco oh, good that's Lord that. Rocco but yeah damn just tearing it up all right we're gonna go find some trees let's go find some trails let's go find them yeah, so as you can see, um, it is my first time doing this. I am not experienced in this at all. You know, I know nothing about it. So I'm learning as I go. So uh, we have that conibear bear down there at that beaver dam for about three, four days. No action at all, doesn't get set off, nothing like that. We don't even see him on camera down there anymore. So we decided to come over here to this side where we found three major runoffs. I'm talking about like dreading dirt and it's just worn down. It looks like someone's been driving through it repeatedly. It is the next day. We had a little cold front come through last night. It feels really good right now. 
but uh, we had to make a few changes the other day. Uh, so there was no activity over there on the other side next to the hut. I think the hole that we found was probably an old hole. And they have not been going through there. But we do have this. Oh, hold on. Okay, so here we have some slides that the beavers have been making right here. Some pretty nice slides too. You can see where they'll come slide right here. And they'll slide and go all the way down to this creek. So let me let me grab my tripod real quick. So they got these slides, right? <laughs> so they're going down here. You can see the slide mark all the way down here. Oof, I try not to fall. But they are sliding all the way down here. So what me and my buddy Austin did is you can just see it clear as day. And I put a little camera right here, right next to the trail, facing this way. And uh, see where he just slides right there, gets right into the water. <laughs> uh, let me put y'all up real quick. So finally, we find this really, really good spot. It's right over there. And uh, we set up, set up the conor bear. Looks amazing, beautiful. Set up the sticks, and it's all a waiting game from there. So this is where they're coming up at. So I'm gonna put it right. Put it about right. I'd say probably about right there. Yeah, right there. Over the top of it so it's kind of like they're forced to go under so we're gonna put this actually you know what let's move this down just a little bit more right there that's exactly where we want it right there so they're forced to go down right here and when they do then I want to see that and game over I don't know if y'all heard that or not, but I just heard a tail slap. Which is weird because these beavers, I never call them on camera during the day, it's always at night, so. But, whatever. The trap is still set. This way they're kind of forced to go under. And when they do, surprise, surprise. Right there. Mm. Now a lot of people I've seen say that you need to like attach wire to it, but with the Conor 330, it's so deadly and it's so quick and so powerful that as soon as it like claps them right on the neck or anything like that, it, it pretty much kills them instantly. They might suffer just a little bit, but it's pretty quick. I'm just going to tie it right here off of this tree. Just a simple knee knot right there too extreme so now we got that now for the other part that we're about to do where is it I know I brought it it's in my pocket it's this stuff right here you really can't beaver trap without it. I mean you can but not as well let's put it that way and this stuff right here is a uh, Teo's beaver lure got off Amazon for like 12 bucks I'll drop a link down in the description so y'all can pick this up if you want it but stuff it's weird, like you expect beaver hormone or whatever this is called, castor lure, to smell bad. It really doesn't. It's like a, it's like a sweet chili smell. It's weird. It's a weird smell, but uh, yeah, that's what it is. It's just some brown goop. Camera's not gonna focus. There it is. Yeah, it's just brown goop. And what you want to do with this stuff is it even says like directions. Uh, put half a cap full, but we're not gonna do caps. We're just gonna do uh, this beaver stick. I mean, this stick right here. And what we're all gonna do is just gonna just dunk it all in there. 
Yeah. Look. Whole thing just coated. And that's exactly what you want. You want a nice good amount. So it's something that smells like really strong. Really, really strong. Oops, start to drip a little bit. Get all over that stick. And then we're gonna come back down here to where our trap is. I'm gonna put this right here. Right in front of me. I want to move this trap up just a little bit more. That way they don't feel tempted to go over it or anything like that. There we go. Feel good about that now. That's good. That's exactly how I want it. So we got the Condor Bear 330 out. We have the Beaver Caster Lure right in front of it. So what they're going to do is they're going to smell. Let me bring it up. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna smell this castor lure right here, and they're gonna think another beaver is poaching on their territory, and they're not gonna have that. So obviously they're gonna come and investigate it. So when they come to investigate it, that conor bear trap is right in front of that beaver lure. So as soon as they hit that wire, game over. Game over. I really hope this stuff works. I really, really do. I've seen a whole bunch of videos over it. Trapper Jay, shout out to you, bro. A lot of your videos have really helped me with this situation. But hope it works. Fingers crossed. I feel good about it. I do. It looks good. Let me take you off the tripod here so I can show y'all what we got going on. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to say that I need to completely submerge that, which I probably should, but there's such a steep drop off, it's kind of hard. So I want it to stick it out of the water just a little bit so they're not trying to go over it in any way and I got those sticks all set up so they can't go over it so obviously the beers gonna have to kind of like make a little dive right there and that caster lure is right there so I feel good about it I feel good about it I've been after these beer for about three weeks now only have them on camera once I gotta say these are some sneaky sneaky creatures amazing amazing engineers amazing creatures but no matter how amazing they are, too much of a good thing makes it bad. And they are completely destroying this pond. Yes, some trees are good for fish habitat, but not all the trees. That is where we gotta draw the line. So we're gonna take out a few of these beavers, one at a time, and we're gonna call it a day. But guys, I will see y'all tomorrow. Fingers crossed that we got a beaver in this trap. Fingers crossed. I have, for three weeks, I've been waiting to get a beaver. So I'm not patient. <laughs> But fingers crossed, I feel good about it. I also got another trap down there. It's just a Duke number three foot trap. And nothing has even went over there. So we're going to leave it. But I will see y'all tomorrow. So a week or two goes by. I forgot exactly how long. I, I came out here and checked it. I'm pretty sure it was like a week and a half actually. And just checking it, checking it, checking it, checking it. And guess what? No beavers on camera. Nothing setting off the trap. Nothing. And so finally I've watched a few videos and I hear about this stuff called, hold on. Right here. It's called beaver lure. It is a caster lure. It is taken from the caster gland of the beaver. And that's what they roll on their territory to let other beavers know, hey, this is my land, buddy. You need to get away. So this is what it is right here. If y'all can see it, if it'll focus. There you go. It's called Teo's uh, Beaver Lure. I got this stuff, it's one ounce. I got it off Amazon for like 12 bucks. I'll drop the link in the bio and description so you know where to get this. But uh, guys, I just wanna tell you right now, uh, a lot of people say this is good. I know back in the day they used to make perfume out of this stuff, but it is just absolutely, it, it, it's something. It's like, it's like a sweet musty smell. Like it's just, it's goo. It's not gonna focus, okay. But anyway, it's just goo, it's, it's, it's something. But anyway, so I got this stuff and I started setting this out on the Conor Bear trap. I just took a stick and just dumped it in, doused it, just didn't even really care, and stuck that stick right in front of the trap, probably about six inches away, not, not a full foot, but about six inches on a big old stick. And sure enough, three days later, uh, well, I'll just roll the video for y'all because I was freaking out. I was really surprised. I was expecting not to catch anything, and lo and behold, I got this monster.
bark on these hooks. And they're going to eat it. I don't think it works like that. <laughs> I wish it did, though. That'd be cool. You still see any leaks? Actually, no. I really don't. I see none underneath me. Good sign. Fantastic news. Fantastic news. <laughs> Guys, <clears throat> I think we got a beaver. The trap is in the water now, and it looks like there's something in it. Ah, oh, finally. Finally. <laughs> oh, guys, I've been after these beavers for about a month now. <clears throat> and I think I finally got one. I can't tell. I'm about to get down there. I did not bring my tripod. I am so sorry, so I'm going to have to set y'all down right there. Hopefully. I know it's not the best angle. I'm sorry. But uh, that's all I got. Cast your lure down. Don't want to drop that in the water. All right, y'all. Sorry about that. I had to pull this fat son of a gun out of the water. But let me walk y'all through the trap because the last few times I come out here, it's been dead. So I really didn't pick up the camera and actually go into detail about what I was doing. But now that we finally have the beaver, I can go into detail about what I did and how I caught this thing. Okay, so right here. Right is one of their main runs and you can tell because look just it's scraped up all right here and they're coming over here because there's another pond across the way past those trees so they're going all down here here you can see the slide right there goes down and across the way so knowledge told me well youtube and trapper j and flair told me that you want to look for the runs where they're traveling the most and set the trap there so that's exactly what we did right here me and my buddy Austin uh, put some sticks right here to kind of block it so they didn't go around the trap. And we laid it right here, pretty much completely submerged it in the water. I had that big stick uh, going through it and I had that other one on top of it. So they had no choice kind of go dive under is what I'm trying to say is what they were kind of forced to do. So that's what we did. Tied it off to this big old tree right here. And sure enough, lo and behold, right around the neck. That is exactly how you want them. Everything's still intact. Homeboy probably died pretty quick, probably didn't feel much, but he is huge. That's probably a 30, 40 pound beaver. Big tail, it's my first time touching it with y'all on camera. Oh wow, that's crazy. That is, that's wild, it's like leather. That is so cool. That is a big beaver, guys. Look at the teeth on this thing. That is insane. That is so crazy. But again, out here at the, I'm going to start calling this thing the ranch. This is where I got my first deer at in October. Now it's January. It's the new year, 2022. And I got my first beaver ever. Oh, it's great. It's great, great, great. Just a sense of accomplishment, really. Because these beavers are completely destroying my buddy's property. Let me take you through it. Look, right here next to the trap, they're just chewing away at all of this. Oh, I had, a, had a, the camera right here trying to check on them. But uh, right over here too, just chewing on all of it, tearing it apart. See, all the bark's off that tree. You keep walking down here to the little pipeline clearing. See, look, all the bark is just off all the trees. It's, oh, this is, this is a pretty fresh one. Didn't see that the other day. And right there, but yeah, so. Beavers are just bad news. Like, if they're tearing up your land, you know, they gotta go. They got to go. They are t they're cutting down all these trees, it's falling in the pond, and it's not good. It's not good for the fish, it's not good for us as fishermen. So, I had to take them out. Feel a little bad about it, but really, really excited about it because I've heard beaver tastes really, really good. Their pelts are waterproof. It's, they're just amazing creatures. So, yeah, I feel a little guilty, but it's just awesome. And their fur is so soft. So soft. That is so crazy. Look at that. That's, that's just wild. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So, needless to say, I was very excited. And it's always exciting when you put in so much effort into something, so much time, and so much just everything to catch this animal and finally you do and it's a it's a sense of accomplishment it really makes you feel that you can just do anything and that's what I learned from the deer that's what I learned from this beaver 
and it's just a great feeling. That's why I like doing it. And also for the experience because, like like I said in the beginning of this video, like our America, everything we know was based off the fur trade in the beginning with the Indians. It was, it's great. It's history. So after this, uh, like I just want to give a heads up. Viewer discretion is advised on this part because we do take it up to the house and we do skin it. And we take the fur off and everything. So I'm going to roll that clip for you all right now. Hold up, that's gonna slide right off. Sheesh. Just fucking going back here. The fucking real cowboys. Nah. Nah. Yeah. Yep. There it is. I got through the bone. There. Bam. Beaver pelt. That's wow. Heavy. <laughs> it's like. 12 pounds of beaver fur. That's a good pellet too. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Tastes like steak. Get out here. It looks just like steak. The taste is like steak too, like the heat of meat. Oh. Yeah. Not a sharp knife at all. But I gotta tell y'all what, we did the backstrap Italian style and uh, we used the Olive Garden Italian seasoning. We used some roasted garlic, like minced garlic stuff and some uh, pesto. We just took all that, we just dumped it in the uh, Olive Garden bottle and shook it up and put the backstraps in a Ziploc bag and just doused it in there and let it sit for about 30 minutes to an hour. And then after that, we took it and put it on a pan and just like put all that seasoning on top of it and threw it in the oven for about an hour and took it out and guys, I'm, I'm Mm, I can't ex I can't explain it like a lot of y'all people are out there probably thinking like beaver is freaking gross That is disgusting. I will never eat that But all I gotta say is give it a chance guys because I am NOT messing around it tasted just like beef beef fajitas Take that back strap slice it put on some fajita. Oh Oh boy, I'm hungry already. You have no idea, but it was just so delicious guys But the experience I got out of this was just phenomenal like I, 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 I now know and have a respect for people that trap and do fur trading for a living. Like shout out to you guys because this is not easy. It is a messy, messy job. It is dirty. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel, guys, for more awesome stories and videos like this. By the way, I'm about to start fishing again. I think I've got all the hunting out of my system, so y'all prepare for that. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Y'all keep it real. Peace.